What's up guys, it's Andy, and I wanted to get one more video in before the end of the year review. And this is what I'm choosing to do, is an official barn tour of Elliot and mine's new stable. I did do a TikTok as well as um, like a little moving vlog, but you didn't get to see the area that much. So I figured a more in-depth vlog would be warranted. Um, this will be part of the end of year review if you are new to the channel. Every year I do an end of year review where I look at how the channel did, how the TikToks went, who is our most active follower, and then I do like a video montage of everything that happened throughout the year. So you can go check out, I have two or three from the past couple years. If you wanna check those out, um, those are on my page. They take the most time to make and get the least amount of views. So I would love it if those could get some views as well. So let's go ahead and get started with the barn tour. So when you first walk in, it's the big aisle area to the entryway. And then over here, immediately to the right, is going to be the laundry room. So there's a ton of blanket storage, so we don't have to worry about bringing blankets back and forth. Every horse has their own section. And then there is also a washer and dryer. Laundry is included with board. However, they don't do blankets. So I pretty much take all of my stuff home to wash. But if I give Elliot a bath or need towels or anything like that, I can use the ones at the barn supplies and then they will wash them for free and restock them as needed. So that's pretty cool. They have a nice utility sink if we need it. Um, but this is where the workers usually keep most of their stuff. Okay, and then once you come this way, it's the main barn aisle. And the first door to the left is going to be the feed room. Which, if you can hear the kicking of the metal, that's my friend Lori's horse, Ganto. He thinks it's feeding time. Anybody, somebody comes at night. So, um... In the feed room, there's Purina, which is what the barn feeds. It's included in board. We have a monitor for all of the security cameras. Down over here, there is all the feed buckets and every horse gets their own little grain bucket and supplement bin for whatever they need. So after the feed room, right next door is the big old wash stall, which I love because Elliot is constantly covered in pee and unlike my previous stable, this one, the wash stall is open all year round. So, and it has a really nice supply of hot water, almost too hot water. So I've definitely burned my hands a couple times. So it's really good to have in winter. And then they also supply us with like all the rags and towels and stuff. And then we've got a bucket and sweat scrapers that we can use. I do use my own products, um, but pretty much anything that's out is for border use. Um, I just never know if something is privately owned, so I just always use my own stuff, but it's really nice to not have to bring towels out every day to wash Elliot and all of his pee body. Okay, so then if you go to the right from the feed room, this is the break room. This is a full kitchen, so we have dishwasher, sink, and refrigerator to keep our drinks in, and we have a microwave, and then we have a full, sorry, half bath, which is really nice in the middle of winter in the Midwest. It's heated and just absolutely beautifully well done. And then it merges into kind of like a little seating gathering area. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Still figuring out where all the light switches are. So there is a fireplace seating and a big TV. So maybe if you have like family that's not horse oriented, but wants to support you, they can kind of hang out while you do your thing. And then over here are the tack lockers, which you may have previously seen in my last vlog when we were getting mine all set. So mine is the one that's right here. You guys did kind of get to see what it looked like, but now it's officially finalized minus his cooler that is currently in the wash at home. So I've got extra tack, lunging supplies, my helmet, my bridle, my saddle, my boots, whips, and crops. I've got my clipping and uh, bathing stuff, some just kind of extra stuff, my standing wraps and poultice, another pair of boots, lunging equipment, just kind of the random stuff. And then 
I was inspired by Esme to hang my saddle pads and organize them that way, and it's actually really nice. So I've enjoyed doing that, and this is what the final tack locker ended up looking like. Okay, so then we've got some seating areas throughout for if we were to have large parties. And then this is the um, viewing area for the indoor arena. As you can see, it's very bright, easy to see. This glass is actually slightly tinted, which Elliot isn't sure how he feels about that because he just sees shadows moving behind it. So in our lesson yesterday, he was very upset that he didn't know what was going on. But this is the viewing area and it does light up as well. Ta-da! Beautiful lights. And then we'll move on to the next area. So after you leave through the doorway from the viewing area, there's a first aid area, which is really nice because Elliot had some cellulitis. I already had antibiotics on hand, but they were able to give him butanbanamine to help with pain and inflammation. So that was awesome to have on hand. And then it brings you into the grooming stall area. So we have two grooming stalls. Only one of them has a solarium right now, um, but I've never had a solarium before. So I thought they were super cool and you can, do just the lights or you can turn on the fans with the lights and then you can like raise it up and down which Elliot has um, not gotten used to yet so we just turn on the lights and let him feel the heat and each area has like little cubbies so I am able to keep my grooming kit out here which allows for me to have less things in my tack locker or vice versa makes more room for me to put other things in my tack locker. Okay, so next we're gonna go to the arena. So this is the grooming area. We've got extra stuff for cleaning up, a muck bucket, and then this is our indoor arena. So this is a firewall. So if there's a fire either in the arena or in the barn, someone can go on either side and be protected from fire. So that's really cool. And the arena is 80 by 200, but with the kickboards, I think it like the rideable space measures closer to like 70, 75, but you can utilize the whole arena because there's nothing out in here. I think it's the same or similarly compromised space as our previous facility, but the previous facility at one end had all the jump storage. So it kind of took away from the space. So we'll go down and we'll take a look at the jump storage area. So if you come this way and the arena is the fiber additive footing. So if you look at this, so it's got fabric in the sand. So they water it and they drag it at least once, if not twice a day. So that is a major improvement in footing from what we came from our previous barn. I do give the previous barn's owners credit for like replacing the footing, but it definitely didn't get dragged enough um, for how light and fluffy the footing was. It didn't really have any weight to it. So it was really easy, especially when the barrel racers would do their thing, it would make huge pits in the arena and it was kind of dangerous. It's a high risk for soft tissue injury. So this area here, when we open the nice quiet garage door, this is the area that Elliot absolutely hates. I'll turn on a quick light so I can show you guys what we've got. So our owner was awesome enough to order a bunch of Jump for Joy jumps out of the UK. So every set has two white ended poles, so like the ends are white, and then it has one that has black. The black ended are weighted, so they're a top rail, so that's super cool. We have various sets and colors of Cavalettis. We've got a gate, like a picket fence, and then we've got an actual like alternating color gate that we can use for filler. We can use cones and Cavalettis for fillers, and I'm kind of hoping that I can convince her to buy some flower boxes so that me being a hunter can get a little practice with that, but Elliot's never really minded the flowers, so I don't think it would be that big of a deal. And then we have wood poles specifically for Cavaletti work and groundwork. Um, so we don't use those for the jumps, we only use those for Cavaletti's and like trot pole, canter pole work. 
And then we have a various amount of standards. They're all the plastic, super lightweight. Like I'm very weak and I can carry two of these at a time. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, that's our jump area and indoor. So next I'll talk a little bit about the pastures. Obviously it's dark outside, so I can't take you out there, but I will insert some clips that I grabbed yesterday. So there are um, a cluster of dry lots, which are bigger than your average dry lot, but they're still kind of small, but it's usually just one horse per dry lot. They are with um, other horses surrounding them. I can put in a clip of Elliot playing with his friend Geronimo over the fence line. It's also how Elliot got hurt outside because they were playing like crazy people and running around out in the dry lots. They are big enough for them to walk, trot, canter and throw a couple of bucks. And so he doesn't have to fight for food outside, which is nice. Once the ground is frozen, then they'll go out in small groups into the large pastures, which I'll put in video clips of here. And then the large pastures actually lead to the outdoor arena. The outdoor arena is not the fiber additive footing, but it does have its own water source. So that's pretty cool because it keeps the arena from drying out and then they still drag it every day. And um, the outdoor arena is 80 by 160. So a little bit smaller than the indoor. It doesn't have any jumps out there currently. One, because it's winter and two, because we have a limited supply of jumps and they're not sure if they're gonna buy special set to stay outside or just keep growing the collection and we'll move them out seasonally. And then next to the outdoor is a grassy area where they will be building an outdoor dressage arena specifically in the summer of next year. So that's pretty cool. And just like that, we're back to the main aisle. So it kind of loops and makes a circle or like a rounded triangle, if you will. So this is the main barn aisle. So there is the like stock area. So hay, shavings, utensils for the staff. And then we have nine stalls. This stall is reserved for someone who's moving into the house on the property. And then of course, Elliot, Mr. Elliot, hello, he's dirty. And they put out the hay for the next shift so that it's easy to put it in. The stalls, don't kick, ganto. <laughs> edit this part out, I guess. And then the stall on the end is gonna be reserved for when the owner of the barn finds her horse. She did lose her horse either earlier this year or last year, so she'll be looking for a new horse. And then this leads to out in the pastures. The stalls are 14 by 14. They have automatic waterers. They have the mattress pad system flooring and the automatic waterers also have an intake monitor so you can see how much your horse drinks throughout the day. And then all of them have Dutch doors that go out to a shared run. We'll go back this way so he stops. So what I was trying to say before Ganto so rudely interrupted me with kicking his stall door was that um, the Dutch doors open up into a shared run area and the shared runs are used on days where it's pouring rain. So like today it was wet and kind of drizzling all day, but they all went outside, which I absolutely love that because I hate when the horses have to stay inside, especially with our Midwest winter type weather. Um, so when it's pouring or if it's like a really bad snowstorm, the shared run is about the size of one of the dry turnouts. And so they'll alternate like the horses throughout the day going outside in addition to like walking them in the arena and allowing them to stretch their legs. So. It's a pretty good system and all of the stalls have cameras. So every night, if you check out my TikToks, I have some TikToks of Elliot's stall camera footage. I can do playback so I can watch the day before and the night before. Um, just gives me some peace of mind being able to see like when night check comes and that he's gotten his food for the night. And then also to see how much he lays down overnight because he spends a decent amount of time sleeping, laying down, which is really, I don't know if that's normal for him or not. I guess now I would consider it normal but he really enjoys that mattress pad flooring. So that's it for this vlog. I hope you enjoyed the barn tour. It's a very nice place. We're very fortunate to be here and the people, the owner, the staff, and the other boarders have been so awesome. And we are 
very blessed, very blessed to say the least. And I can't wait to bring you more vlogs in 2024 of lessons. I want to get a PIVO system so I can film my lessons. And then I'm sure Paul, our handy cameraman today, will be out to video some of my rides in the evenings. And I'll just continue to do get readies with me. And if there's anything you want to see on the channel for 2024, go ahead and comment down below. And if you want to subscribe and like this video, that would help me out so much. We are very close to 200 subscribers, so that's really cool. And I would love to hit 200. Um, maybe by the end of the year is a little um, unrealistic, but I think we could do it in like the next three to six months. And that would be really cool to do. So that's it for this vlog and we'll see you guys in the next one.